Okay, I remind you the basic uh, hypothesis and uh, rationale was uh, that an appropriate whole diet, a Mediterranean diet ad hoc fortified for the elderly, should decrease the level of uh, inflammation. I remind you that uh, this hypothesis uh, is still alive. Uh, the idea that inflammation and inflammation is at the basis of uh, most age-related uh, diseases. We arrived at the conclusion some years ago that inflammation is uh, a has a systemic uh, nature and that uh, liver, muscle, adipose tissue, immune system, uh, and the gut can play a major role. And uh, just to remind you, we published with uh, Willem uh, some years ago this paper suggesting that there is a correlation between, just to give you an idea of the complexity of uh, uh, the inflammation, uh, we studied the gut microbiome, which nowadays is, which is so uh, fashionable, and you can see that we found uh, some years ago in this paper, which is highly cited, uh, that there are uh, some cytokines, uh, inflammatory cytokines correlated with uh, uh, some bacterial species, uh, that about 9% of the total variability of the gut microbiota is correlated with uh, uh, pro-inflammatory pattern. And, and recently, just to give you an idea, uh, we are publishing this paper uh, that uh, suggests that uh, from uh, 20 to 110 years, there is a remodeling, a continuous remodeling of the gut microbiota. The core microbiota with the dominant species lose uh, biodiversity, the, the, the yellow circle decrease in size, but at the same time, subdominant uh, uh, type of bacteria uh, increase. So there is a, a shrinkage of the core microbiota, but the acquisition of longevity adapted subdominant fractions. And you can see that some uh, are very interesting, for example, Ackermansia from 1% to 4% and so on. So there is a very complex, and today we will hear about uh, the first results of the microbiota in uh, New Age. Uh, remember that uh, now we have a larger perspective uh, of the, what is called the new geroscience. There was this meeting that uh, was organized, and this is uh, the, the, the review that we published. Uh, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, suggesting that in order to target aging, uh, we have to target aging in order to combat uh, age-related diseases as a whole and not one by one. Uh, and inflammation is part, uh, is one of the pillars uh, of uh, the uh, pathogenesis, the, the, the mechanism underpinning the aging process, uh, and inflammation is one of them, of course, uh, but uh, deeply correlated uh, with many others, like proteostasia, adaptation to stress, uh, epigenetics, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the reason why we are pursuing uh, a systemic omic approach of inflammation uh, uh, in which there are genetics, environment, the complex uh, clinical phenotype of the people, and the several layers, including metabolomics, transcriptomic epigenetics, and so on. Coming back to uh, New Age, within this uh, uh, general scenario, of course, April 30, 2016 is coming. It's unbelievable how fast the time is running. Uh, and of course, uh, we have studied a lot of uh, parameters, cytokines, CMV positivity, CRP, gut microbiota, glycomics, uh, in-depth immune status, and several omics. For, uh, I remind you, the design of the study, uh, there were inclusion criteria. Age was from 65 to 79, a very interesting uh, age range. Uh, uh, and we assessed, uh, uh, we recruited the people according to the frailty assessment proposed by Linda Fried. Uh, of course, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, type of uh, 
uh, assessment for frailty. Uh, Linda Fried uh, uses five uh, uh, items. There were papers suggesting uh, um, 36, uh, 36 uh, items, another one uh, 70 uh, items. So you know frailty is very complex and very not so well defined. Uh, we, uh, the idea was, the original idea was to recruit uh, uh, 625 non-frail and uh, 625 six, uh, pre-frail, excluding the frail subject, uh, and assign uh, randomly either to a whole Mediterranean diet or controls, and in a sub-group uh, uh, of people to do some uh, in-depth analysis. <laughs> Uh, remember, the, the, the frail phenotype is based on an intentional weight loss, self-reported exhaustion, weakness, slow walking speed, and low physical activity. If you have uh, two of them, you are pre-frail. If you have three, you are considered frail. Uh, frailty is a state of increased vulnerability to stressors that result from decreased physiological reserve and multi-system dysregulation. Uh, and the frailty is an aggregate expression of risk factors resulting from age or disease associated physiological accumulation of sub-threshold decrement affecting multiple physiological systems. So the, the fact that uh, frailty is systemic is very clear and this is the reason why it's so difficult. Uh, this is uh, so shrink shrinking the death weight loss weakness, so uh, low hand grip strength, poor endurance, uh, self-reported exhaustion, slowness, uh, that's low gait speed, and low activity evaluated on uh, uh, 18 activity from the Minnesota lay from, uh, from this type of, uh, of uh, questionnaire. Uh, we recruited, uh, we were very successful, so we recruited uh, all the people that were uh, allotted uh, uh, for a total of 1,219 volunteers, uh, 64, uh, 644 diet, uh, 650 controls. Uh, this is the, the uh, classification regarding frailty, gender, and age group. And you can see that the reality is a little bit different from the design. Uh, because the pre-frail people are not 50%, we found that uh, pre-frail people are much more rare in, in our type of, uh, of uh, volunteers. Uh, it's 23% uh, in the Netherlands, 21% UK, 22 Italy, 13 France. They are the best. Eh? <laughs> Poland uh, uh, is 30%, uh, so the mean is 25. Men are not 50%, but 44%. And uh, we recruited a little bit younger people. So from 65 to 72 are 64%. So a little bit younger, especially in some country like UK and France. Uh, the, uh, just to anticipate some of the main results, uh, the, uh, the main <laughs> The main message is that the new age volunteers are different in the five recruiting countries. So people who say that the Mediterranean diet apply universally, applied despite the differences that are present in the human population and in different countries, in different cultures, is wrong. Uh, the reality is much more complex and interesting. Uh, anyway, there are a, a lot of differences per country regarding the genetic structure, uh, the body composition, the compliance, the diet response, blood, some blood measurement, cytomegalovirus positivity, and some inflammatory parameters. So uh, this is something that uh, you have to take into account. The, I found the results, uh, the preliminary results, extremely interesting because we go much further regarding the usual literature on Mediterranean diet who do not take at all into account this type of variables which are the real life. Uh, <clears throat> this is very important regarding the frailty status. Uh, 
uh, and the changes during the one year of new age intervention. So the changes can be between uh, people who are pre-frail and become non-frail or vice versa. And you can see diet and control, uh, very interesting, say France, Italy, Netherlands, Poland, and the UK, uh, improved a lot of people stable, 435 out of, uh, for, uh, uh, in, in, uh, were stable in uh, the control and the same number in uh, diet. Uh, the people who improved are a little bit more in those who followed the diet and those who became worse, uh, of course, uh, are higher, the number is higher in the control. But there are a lot of uh, uh, differences regarding, uh, regarding uh, the, uh, the countries, again. Uh, Remember that the New Age is, not, uh, is a real-life nutritional trial uh, because it's with volunteers is, uh, uh, and uh, has all the advantages and disadvantages of a real-life nutritional trial. The volunteers recruited within New Age did follow the diet. So this is very important because we have the data suggest that they follow the diet. Uh, the diet arm has a 10% increase in compliance versus the mean, which is enormous. This is a, a one of the, the main results. So the, we, the, the data that uh, we will present uh, are uh, reliable. Gender and country appears to be the major variable. One of the main discovery of uh, New Age was that men and women are different. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, yes. Uh, uh, I probably we will not get the Nobel Prize for this, but, uh, but it's not trivial because uh, after, uh, especially for women, I was taught that after menopause, uh, women become more similar to men because of uh, the hormones and so on. But this is not uh, at all the case we found that between this age range, 65 to 79, uh, these are two words. So you have to take into account when you speak about a diet, uh, at least country and gender. Uh, the frailty cri criteria by country, uh, there are the, the five items, and you can see that there are some uh, 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 of course, uh, a lot of uh, similarities, but for example, uh, endurance is uh, in UK, you know, is uh, out of the mean. Uh, the shrinking, so lose weight uh, is uh, much higher in Poland than in the other part of the weakness, which means uh, hand grip, uh, all uh, the, um, the, the UK, uh, do not have any type of, uh, only very few, say 20%, 18% do have uh, a problem with the hand grip, so they are very strong. Uh, in the UK, you are so strong. <laughs> uh, but this is also interesting because frailty is never conjugated uh, regarding countries and uh, gender and so on. So, this is a, an extremely interesting uh, project. Uh, for example, this is another is uh, cytomegalovirus positivity. Cytomegalovirus is uh, one of the very big virus, has an enormous information, uh, and uh, is very important because accelerate the aging of the immune system, what we call in our jargon immune senescence. And you can see that uh, Italy and Poland uh, have an enormous number of positivity, uh, while in France, uh, Holland, uh, and the UK, uh, they have much less. And this can impinge upon a lot of variables, as we know. The literature on cytomegalovirus is very large. <clears throat> uh, this is regarding CMB positivity and diet, and again, uh, control and subject, no, not much difference. Uh, this is uh, 
in a subgroup uh, we are studying uh, some variables like uh, adiponectin this is uh, the log uh, of uh, p value and the groups are Italy and Poland, and you can see that uh, the more is uh, to the left, the more is significant. Uh, so gender is extremely significant because it's out, would be there. Eh? Uh, uh, not time, T0, T1, t not country, but uh, uh, the, uh, the frailty status is uh, extremely important. Uh, this is uh, on... Uh, uh, CRP. For CRP, uh, gender is, uh, this is a 0.05, country is extremely important. Uh, and uh, this with uh, leptin, you can see that gender is extremely important. The, uh, the p-value is extremely high. Uh, this is uh, the correlation T0, T1 regarding glycomic, the red is by chance. What would happen by chance? Glycomic uh, versus, so N-glycans, which is a sign of inflammation and aging, versus cytokines. And you can see that there is a lot of uh, correlation. The glycans, the cytokines, are correlated not by chance. Uh, and. Uh, this is with the PCA component. Uh, there are different, uh, in green, uh, different component, but there is a, a strong correlation between glycomic uh, cytokines uh, uh, and uh, uh, so th the data are uh, highly correlated. This is a, 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 a correlation between uh, uh, cytokines, a lot of cytokines, and uh, uh, the N-glycans, and of course the cytokines are highly correlated to each other. Uh, the N-glycans are also correlated to each other, but there are correlation between N-glycans and cytokines, which are some of the most powerful marker of uh, inflammation. Uh, this is uh, the explained uh, variance. So, about 50% uh, uh, of the variance is the first component uh, is not so robust, uh, but the cumulative explained variance from about 60% to 100% suggests that these uh, parameters are highly correlated and robust. Uh, <coughs> uh, the, uh, we did a study on the genetics, all the people all the, the samples have been analyzed by an Illumina Omni Express bead chip containing more than 700,000 SNPs. We genotyped 1,200 samples, and we did, a, a, of course, a quality check uh, per individual. Of course, you have to, uh, to check if there are discordant sex information and so on. Uh, and, of course, uh, 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 there are uh, the identification of individual with uh, outlying missing genotype of heterozygosity rate. Uh, I do not uh, want to go into details. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, the uh, identity by uh, descent was also estimated. Uh, so in summary, the genetics was done on 1,200 samples. Uh, after quality check, uh, this is the number, so very high quality. Uh, genotype failure versus heterozygosity. Again, uh, few samples were removed, so uh, eventually the data regards 1,178. So extremely good quality. Uh, the, uh, uh, eventually, uh, doing the other per marker quality control, so if each SNP is uh, uh, well uh, genotyped, uh, 700 uh, were removed, so the, now the genetics regard one, uh, 711,632. Uh, this is, uh, we made a, another very interesting discovery that in Europe the population are genetically different. Huh? <laughs> you didn't know before, but these are the data. What is interesting is that Poland are very apart from all the other. Uh, this is Italy. 
uh, this is, uh, uh, these are uh, UK and the Netherlands, indistinguishable. You didn't know, but you are the same genetically. Eh? And the France, of course, is in between. Eh? As usual, you are in between. Uh, this is very interesting uh, because uh, we can do, we can correlate uh, uh, many of the parameters that we are measuring with this uh, genetic structure. Uh, and uh, we will, we will uh, consider together <laughs> England and, uh, and the Netherlands. <coughs> uh, uh, okay. We did an epigenetic analysis of a new age in 60 subjects from Italy, uh, T0 and uh, T1, and 60 subjects from Poland, T0 and T1. Uh, all diet, so these are people who follow the diet. Uh, we use a genome-wide DNA methylation, Illumina Infinium 450, which uh, looks at uh, about uh, a little bit less than half a million of CPGs. And we, we did uh, uh, first the Horvath epigenetic clock, and then a comparison of DNA methylation profiles between samples. This has been done, this is uh, in progress. Uh, what is the epigenetic clock? Uh, Steve Horvath, in a famous paper in the, published in 2013, suggested that using genome-wide studies with half a million or 27,000 K, you can identify, he identified 353 CPGs whose methylation level is a multi-tissue predictor of age, which allows to estimate the epigenetic DNA methylation age versus chronological age. Uh, we published this paper, just to give you an idea of what we have done in New Age, we just published this paper, uh, Decreased Epigenetic Age in the Peripheral Blood Mononuclear Cell from Italian Semi-Supercentenarians. Semi-Supercentenarians are people over 105 and their offspring. Uh, you can see here that this is uh, the uh, age predicted and this is the real one. And you can see that most of the people over 105 are below, and the same is for the offspring. After all the, uh, <coughs> the calculation regarding the cell types and so on, it appears that, uh, according to the model, the semi-supercentenarians are on average 8.7 <coughs> years younger than expected based on chronological age, and what is more important uh, is that the offspring, the offspring do have an age of 70, 70, 72, uh, are five years younger than age matched control. So uh, matched control are people of the same age, same region, everything similar, but not born from long-lived parents. So you can see that uh, it's very powerful, and so this suggests that these people are a biological age which is younger. <clears throat> we did the same in uh, Down syndrome. Down syndrome is considered an accelerated aging syndrome, and you can see that the, uh, the Orvats clock suggests that the leukocyte, the, in, in this case, the controls were the siblings non affected by. Uh, so same family, same half genetics, uh, same environment. And you can see that the leukocyte brain is 11 years older, uh, whole blood five uh, years older and so on. So it works. So we can say that uh, uh, this, if this is methylation age and this is chronological age, that this is the average in the population. Uh, some people have a slower age and some have an accelerated uh, uh, aging. Uh, what happened uh, with the, the Horvath clock? The Horvath clock of new age samples, so these are T0 in blue and uh, uh, T1 in red, practically no difference in uh, Italy and, uh, and uh, Poland. <coughs> so probably one year is, uh, is not enough. Uh, the age acceleration, this is uh, uh, in Italy, and oh well, uh, in, in Poland is, uh, is, uh, uh, we have a, a difference which is uh, 
there is this trend, which is uh, probably with more samples uh, we will reach uh, significance. And uh, we uh, redistributed some money uh, within the project in order to increase this number because we like to have uh, significant uh, results. This is, uh, would be very important and to show that in, at least in some population <laughs> there is the effect. And of course, Poland is also the, the country uh, where Mediterranean diet is not so popular. Eh? Uh, we divided the sample on the basis of gender, uh, Italy gender, and uh, uh, Poland. And in, uh, uh, in gender two, we don't know which is gender two, because we did uh, the analysis uh, blindly, so I cannot say, probably they are female, probably. Uh, uh, gender two Polish show a statistically significant rejuvenation, so please follow Mediterranean diet uh, if you are a female in Poland, because you can rejuvenate. This is a, a powerful uh, biomarker. <laughs> Uh, no change in Italians, so uh, for frailty, uh, there is a statistical significance is retained in polls that they did not change their status. Why? Because, of course, they are a lot. They are, uh, uh, so those who change status are not the majority. So if you look at those who did not change status, they rejuvenate. Uh, okay. Uh, now some other very few just to give you the flavor of what happened. Uh, vitamin D, uh, vitamin D is of course uh, very important. Uh, folate, I don't want to bother you with its old biochemistry. Uh, this is a control and diet, vitamin D, folate, some system, insulin, uh, and, uh, in the control and the diet, this is uh, the data. Vitamin B12 is the only one which appears to be significant. Uh, there is an increase of vitamin B12 uh, after diet. So this is uh, interesting uh, because we supplemented with uh, vitamin B12, so this is expected. Uh, uh, by gender, of course, uh, this is in female and this is in male. Uh, Non-frail and uh, pre-frail, uh, there is a difference in uh, non-frail. Uh, B12, uh, uh, according to the countries, UK. UK, you uh, have a, a significant uh, difference between uh, um, um, there is a, a, a big difference uh, in the uh, in UK. So, uh, by status, uh, in Italy, control the diet, and in Poland, control the diet is significant. Uh, this is folate, Italy, control diet, and the UK. Uh, this is folate for uh, countries. Uh, so difference in folate serum levels after the new age trial in uh, the five countries and the UK again uh, ranks at the top. Insulin, the same. Uh, and homocysteine, the same. Uh, these are very preliminary data just to give you a flavor and of course uh, we will hear much more detailed presentation. So thank you. <coughs>